Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. It's Nick from PictureLine, your premier camera store. And we are very excited to have Mark Cruz from Nikon here with us today. How are you doing today, Mark? Fantastic, Nick. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here again. Yeah, we're, we're happy to have you. Um, it's great to see another introduction of mirrorless cameras from Nikon. And I think it's pretty safe to say that with these two new cameras, uh, mirrorless is here to stay. Um, we're here today, obviously, to talk about the Z6 II and the Z7 II. And I know that with both cameras, we're dealing with the same resolution, but uh, as their predecessors, the Z6 and the Z7. Uh, but are we using the same sensors that were in the first generation cameras or are they different in some way? Yeah, these are the same sensors as the first generation. So they're both backside illuminated uh, CMOS sensors. So that's important because people that are looking at our lineup, you know, the, the Z5 is not a backside illuminated sensor. The Z6, Z7 are both backside illuminated are, as are now the Z62 and Z72. I just want to make your viewers that aren't familiar with our lineup aware that the main difference between the Z62 and the Z72 is mainly the resolution of those sensors. So one is the 24 and a half megapixel for the Z62. That's kind of our all arounder camera. And then for kind of the, the perfectionist studio shooter, landscape photographer, uh, that has uh, almost like a medium format resolution, 45.7 megapixels that's on the Z7 as well as the Z7 II. So we are maintaining the sensors from both of those first generations, but there's a lot of other improvements now that we're in Gen 2. I think it's great that they have a couple of models so that if you're the type of photographer that needs and wants that really high resolution, there's a great solution for you. But if you're somebody that's not doing a lot of really big prints um, or a lot of cropping, uh, the Z6 or the Z6 II in this case uh, is available for you. I think, that's, I think that's a great move on Nikon's part. Yeah, the Z62 is kind of geared towards uh, a lot of different customers out there, a lot of the co content creators or um, uh, creatives out there that are doing maybe a hybrid of photography and video, but um, I think the added resolution of the Z72 is more appealable to people that are shooting, you know, obviously something that is uh, designed for a higher level output in terms of resolution. Sure. Now, I know that I'm probably not the only enthusiast uh, that as soon as these two cameras were introduced, immediately went and looked at the memory card compatibility. I see that with the Z6 and the Z7 II, uh, Nikon has uh, kind of evolved to a dual memory card uh, compatibility using both the CF Express um, or the SD cards. Uh, how's the feedback been on that? Have people been excited about that addition? Um, what, you know, what, what can you tell us there? Nick. People have been so excited about that. That's something that they've been asking for from the moment that we released the Z6 and Z7. I think a lot of the professional community, wedding event photographers needed the peace of mind of a second card slot. And they were, uh, and we are really excited about the fact that we were able to fit in a second card slot. In this case, it's an SD slot. So both the Z6 II and the Z7 II will have dual card slots. The first slot is CF Express. Second one is SD. And we were able to keep the exact same uh, format in terms of size and weight and shape of these cameras while fitting in that second card slot. So if you have brackets from the first generation, underwater housing, things like certain plates that, and accessories that go for that body, you'll be happy to know it remains the same size, same placement of the buttons, consistent design between both, even though we were able to fit in that secondary card slot. So the, the feedback has been great, especially from our more professional community and event photographers that need that redundancy. Awesome. And is that, um, is that SD slot, is it UHS-2 compatible? That's correct. It's UHS-2 compatible, so you can get your 300 megabyte per second cards out there if you wish. But our benchmark testing is really based upon the CF Express card. So uh, if people that are looking at the Z6 II and Z7 II, they'll be able to harness the full power of CF Express cards now because we have dual X-Speed processors in there. That's what gives us more than triple times the buffer for both cameras. It's something, again, our professional community wanted when they saw the Z6 and Z7, but as well, it gives us faster frame rates now. So it's all coming together because we're using CF Express Type B cards. Awesome, awesome. Um, another difference that I noticed, I, I see that Nikon's still using the Xpeed 6 processor in the cameras, but they've moved to a dual processor system. Um, what can you tell our viewers about the primary benefits uh, to this second processor? Yeah, like I said, I skipped the gun there a bit with your question, but essentially on a Z6 II, you're getting three and a half times 
the buffer capacity from the first gen. That's an enormous improvement from the original Z6. So put it this way, you can take 124 shots uh, before this buffer gets filled. On the case of the Z7 2 with 45.7 megapixels, I think you can take 77 shots um, at the highest burst rate before the buffer gets filled. And that's uh, more than three times the buffer capacity. Not only that, but we were able to increase the continuous frame rate at continuous high-speed extended shooting, both on the Z7, which now maxes out at 10 frames per second, as well as the Z6 II, which now has a maximum frame, frame rate of 14 frames per second. Great for sporting photographers and things like that. And, and the first time that we've been able to achieve 14 frames per second from these full-frame mirrorless cameras. The only other camera to do it is uh, the D6 for us and DSLR. So we're really hitting benchmarks now as a result of the dual X-speed processors. It's a lot of data to move through. <laughs> it's kind of a, a crazy data, when you when you, you think know, about the, it. Yeah, to it as well as the autofocusing system now too as well. Yeah. Um, now I noticed that they've also improved the blackout time for those high speed continuous things. Is that processor related, or have there been some changes uh, kind of on the back end, sort of firmware yeah, or software I'm type? Yeah, so that is a good point in terms of con the continuous high speed mode, not the continuous. Uh, high speed extended. When you shoot in continuous extended, you are effectively seeing, you know, the last picture that just showed up. When you're shooting in continuous high speed, that's at about five and a half frames per second. And in that mode, we've improved the sequencing uh, mechanism. So it's not necessarily okay. attributed to the processor. It's a sequencing, but essentially you're seeing more live view for a longer period of time, less blackout. And I think the shooters at, in that mode will appreciate that more because they'll be able to see their composition for a longer period of time. Just that slight uh, bit more period of time, but it makes a difference as we're closing in on the, on the disparity between mirrorless and DSLR. So that's, I think they'll find that really good in terms of an improvement. Plus it actually, you know, if we're splitting hairs here, it gives the camera a little bit more time to focus. So it actually will improve the autofocusing hit rate. Oh, okay, awesome. Um, another thing that I noticed, you, you mentioned kind of closing that gap between DSLR and mirrorless. Um, the, Nikon has made a huge uh, change in the minimum uh, or maximum, I guess, shutter uh, speed. You can do, I think it's a 15 minute, if my math is right, uh, exposure now. Um, I mean, th this seems like Nikon's really kind of going after the astrophotography crowd uh, with a spec like that. Um, I'm curious, how, how are you guys addressing the noise issues that traditionally come with such a long exposure? Is that, again, processor related or, or what's the magic going on here, I guess? Yeah, it's partially processor related. So we have some um, secret recipes that we have within our noise processing that will help mitigate that. Uh, but again, with this feature, it's been something that we've targeted the astrophotography community for and we've had in previous cameras such as uh, the D810A, I think that's the first time we debuted that, and I think as well as the D850, but this is the first time we've had this feature in our mirrorless Z cameras. So uh, it's a welcome feature, uh, especially because now we have things like silent shutter, where we, the, the camera doesn't vibrate. Obviously, it doesn't have a mirror, so it doesn't shake, so you can get more consistent exposures. Um, right. uh, and uh, great for, you know, obviously these star trails and shots like that. Well, I know that Nikon has long been a leader in the high ISO performance. So there's, there's several of us here that are excited to get our hands on a Z6 too and take it out and really put it through its paces uh, for, for some of that Astro stuff. You know, while well, I mentioned that because uh, we also announced a product, the uh, new WRR11B, which goes on the side accessor uh, terminal here. Uh, a lot of people are wondering what they can use for remote control, especially when doing these long uh, extended time lapses and not having to press the shutter release. We have oh, this sure. in conjunction with the WRT10, and we sell it in a bundle. Uh -huh. And uh, we announced that at the same time as these two cameras. So it's great because it uses radio. You can remote control the camera. Among other things, you can control your flash as well as other cameras. There's a plethora of things this radio control can do. All it does is plug it into the accessory terminal here on the side of the camera, and uh, everything can be controlled through radio. So you can for, do further distances and, as well as shoot through barriers. Awesome. Now, I know that uh, with mirrorless and, well, and even DSLRs at this point, uh, video is becoming more and more kind of intertwined with the work that that enthusiasts and professionals are doing. What can you tell us about the new video features out of the Z6 and Z7 too? 
The main improvements for video, Nick, have been to the 4K 60p, something that we did not have in generation one. Our customers have been asking for that combination of frame rate and resolution. We will have it in the Z7 II out of the gates when we start shipping that camera in December. For the Z6 II, we will have that as a firmware update free in February of next year. So that will be for 4K 60 in a DX crop mode. Uh, for the Z7 II, that will be almost a full frame at 93% of the frames. So both those things will be addressed uh, right out of the gates in the case of the Z7 II and the firmware update with the Z6 II. Other updates we've done for video is eye detect is now available in video. That's been very much improved okay. in stills as well as video. And one more notable item that I'll, uh, two more notable items that I'll mention for video is we've been able to reprogram the manual focus ring to reverse the direction in which it moves to focus near and far. This is to address people that are coming from other systems that have muscle memory that simply go the other way. You can do that now with a flick of the switch of the menus. Um, and lastly, okay. I'll also mention compatibility with Black Magic RAW. We've had compatibility with, through a firm paid firmware update for ProRes RAW in the past that will give you 12-bit output through the HDMI port to an external recorder. We're now supporting a couple of Blackmagic recorders. Uh, and that will be, again, as a paid firmware update starting, I believe, February of next year for both the Z6 II and the Z7 II. The great news is for existing users of the Z6 and Z7, they'll be able to get that Blackmagic firmware update for free, provided they already got the ProRes RAW update. So basically, you're getting two for oh, one cool. now. When you, when you get the firmware update, you will both enable and activate ProRes RAW as well as Blackmagic RAW. Awesome. And I'm pretty safe in assuming, I, I hope anyway, uh, that the Z6 II and the Z7 II still have all of the same uh, webcam compatibility in terms of the webcam utility that Nikon is, has released for users. Well, it actually gets even better because not only do we have compatibility with the beta version of the webcam utility that uh, probably last time we spoke was just in its beta form only in PC, but now we have it for both Mac and PC. But I can tell you that there is a full version of it coming very, very soon. As well, these cameras okay. can utilize something called USB power delivery, which we did not have in our Gen 1, Z6, and Z7. Both the version two of these cameras can fully power the camera indefinitely through the USB-C port. Now, imagine you powering the camera and communicating with the webcam utility through one cord. In the past, I might have had two cords going into the camera. One was a dummy battery, the other one was an HDMI to accomplish all this uh, things like using your camera for a webcam. Now we can right. do that with one simple cable that does it all. And we're really excited about that, that compatibility oh. with the USB delivery. Yeah, that's brilliant, awesome. Awesome. Well, um, so I, I, I did also notice uh, that there's a new grip for the Z6 II and the Z7 II. It's not using the same grip that the originals did. Uh, can you tell us why the, why the change? Well, it was another hardware improvement on these bodies. So among the dual card slots and uh, the other hardware upgrades, we have compatibility with this grip. It's called the MBN11. It is different from the MBN10 that we previously announced, uh, that we released with the Z6 and Z7, because this has a finally a trigger on it, controls for the shutter speed, aperture, a joystick for the autofocus points, as well as the ability to hot swap the first battery that's closest to the door. So it accepts two ENEL 15C batteries and it has okay. full compatibility with controls for the camera. Again, this is exclusive to the Z62 and the Z72 because it has contacts for communication in the battery chamber now. So not only for power, but also for controlling of the camera. Um, this will be, again be an exclusive compatibility with the Z62 and Z72. You can still use the MBN10 if you have that from the first generation with the Z6 II and Z7 II. Uh, again, a okay. great product. And, um, and it's actually half the price of the MBN11, but if you, with the MBN11, you have the controls to control your shutter speed. It's really important for people also that are shooting, say, telephoto lenses like I have here, the 70 to 200, because it helps balance and stabilize the camera system when you're holding these longer lenses, super telephoto lenses like uh, that we've just announced too. We are coming out with a 400 and a 600 uh, in 2022. So we have that on our roadmap now officially, and we're excited about that because uh, the system's all rounding out and coming together in a short period of time. Yeah, well, it sounds like Nikon has taken a lot of the feedback that they've gotten from people on the original cameras and have really incorporated a lot of that into the, the Z6 II and the Z7 II, which is, which is great to see. I mean, 
from a from a consumer standpoint, uh, you know, it's always great to hear a manufacturer listening to that feedback and and making changes appropriately. Nick, uh, that's a lot of what we've done with this version of the camera. We've listened to the feedback, and in a very, very short period of time, we've been able to create a life cycle to bring this product to market. Uh, now, basically two years after the launch of the Z6 and Z7, really happy about that. And I think photographers and videographers out there that are looking at our platform as, as a viable solution for their type of work will be pleased to know that today in this system, in October 2020, we have six cameras in the lineup. We have 16 lenses covering everything from wide to telephoto. We have two teleconverters and 11 more lenses on the way that is on our roadmap on our website right now. So, uh, which includes the trinity of 2.8 lenses, mind you, as well. So for the, pro the professional photographers that need those high-end lenses, we have exotic lenses as well, as you know. It's an exciting time for the Nikon Z system. Yeah. So now are the Z6 II and the Z7 II going to be replacing the Z6 and Z7 or are they going to be kind of complementary models in the lineup for a while? The great news, Nick, is that they remain in the lineup. So as I mentioned, we have, starting with the okay. Z50 and all the way up to the Z7 II, we will have six cameras in our lineup. And it's great for people that, have, that, that have now have the ability to make certain choices at certain price ranges with certain feature sets that suit their budget, their shooting style, and their criteria. You know, you start at the Z5 that uh, enters the market around $1,300 for the body only, and you can go all the way up to $2,999 approximately for the Z7 II body, and you'll have, you know, basically five cameras in between there um, all spread throughout. So it's great for people that, you know, want to get into the Z system. They might not need the dual card slots. They might not need the battery grip, uh, and they sure. can get into the Z system. So it's great that they will have options out there because both the Z6 and Z7 will continue in our lineup. Well, it's, it sounds like it's uh, definitely an exciting time to be an icon shooter, and there is plenty of excitement on the horizon. So uh, I look forward to, to seeing the future announcements that come out, and uh, we're super excited uh, for the Z6 II and the Z7 II. Any idea when we might expect to see those hitting the store shelves? Yes, so the Z6 II will be first. It'll come in November, so just around the corner. Okay. The Z7 II will follow awesome. in December, so you don't, your customers don't have to wait very long at all. Awesome. Well, Mark, I know that you are a busy man, so I appreciate you uh, coming uh, and joining us today to talk a little bit about these new cameras. Um, thanks again for joining us. We'll look forward to the uh, next time that we have an opportunity to chat. Anytime, Nick. It's always fun. So uh, hope to talk to you again. Awesome. Thanks. Have a great day. You too.